you can see. Yeah. Jee, how are you? Jee, how are you? I'm fine. So thank you for joining us. Um, so um, we have already informed our viewers about the topic as well. So um, I don't think I need to give a, a heavy introduction of yours because everybody knows Arif Saab, Arif Siddiqui, who has been talking about digitalization uh, during pre-corona times. So nobody knew that what's going to happen in corona times. So uh, let me quickly jump on to my first question. And of course, you have a lot of experience with uh, digitalization and digital transformation, especially when you were in Malaysia for 30 years and plus uh, with Standard Chartered Bank. So um, were we really prepared, the Pakistani banking sector, were we really prepared for uh, these kinds of uh, times where uh, people are getting scared of going out and digitalization is the only solution left in front of us? Over to you. Peter. So uh, if you see that uh, COVID-19 uh, scenario and was the banking sector prepared or not, so this is the one of the sector which is having a lot of uh, normal way of handling the crisis. So there is a mechanism to handle the business continuity uh, program, handle things from a disaster recovery planning and also the crisis management. So all this was tested every year in the banking sector where we test our business continuity, we test our disaster recovery and we test and uh, act as a uh, simulation for a crisis management. So obviously two things was in place. Crisis management team has to invoke as per, and they are meeting every day or second day to uh, day to day to address the issues. So I think one of the industry, probably the banking, was uh, already having number of things in place that in any cases, in any case of the disaster, they can handle such situation. That is great to know, actually. And, 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 and I think I have also very good experience for a change with the bank. So, for example, I could pay my, um, uh, my credit card bill for the first time online. Otherwise, I couldn't do it. I don't know why. Um, all my transactions are going online. Another thing that I would like to appreciate, because the banker is sitting with us, uh, is that now we are not being charged for the transaction. Is it true? Pardon? So whatever transactions I was doing, I was not uh, charged with the extra fee, which I was charged uh, in the other days. Somehow I noticed this. Yeah, I don't true. Know. So, so there are a number of things which uh, uh, regulation came from the st uh, State Bank of Pakistan that how the banks has to give uh, certain things to the customer during this situation because they cannot go to the branches because they have to stay at home. So the number of fee has been, uh, uh, deaf, or their banks are not charging anymore. So when yeah. you are doing online transaction payments and others, there is no fee at this stage on uh, digital uh, side. And you will be surprised that uh, we have seen almost that our digital transactions has gone to double. As you said that you are paying through uh, on a digitally to the credit card first time. A lot of people are doing it, and actually, we see that our volume is significantly increased on a digital side. That is great. So, so Arifab, if I will ask now the next question: So, what are the core learnings uh, of uh, of these uh, times that we will be then adopting, adapting ourselves, and taking this journey, um, you know, uh, further? Okay, very good question. Uh, see, uh, it's just a start of learning because. Uh, COVID-19 has just uh, in a middle or uh, starting in many countries. It still has to end up and it still we have to see and learn more. But obviously people uh, started learning that how they have to work. Like when the people started work from home and everybody started thinking about how to do the uh, online conversation, how we have to do the meetings, how the people are talking to each other. So behavior is getting changed. Obviously, it will be more impact when it is coming because the schools are closed and some of the schools are uh, encouraging students to come over on a various uh, uh, tools to get the training and continue learning. 
like we were we are having a one program which is called uh, uh, our uh, uh, management training program and <laughs> suddenly uh, the our uh, in charge of the training program she came up with the zoom uh, based uh, mechanism so <laughs> all 35 people are on a one uh, every day gathering together and she has continued uh, giving the training so uh, this is a learning there's a journey in a sense that how the people have to start uh, thinking about and human being is pretty good in it i feel that very fast they can act and react in a situation and come up with the new way of doing things so not over i think it's just in the middle of uh, learning and a lot a lot basically i feel that thing will change people will start thinking about even over when covid 19 over they will think about the uh, smart working they think about the work from home they will start thinking about the smart stations or smart seats so the lot of things which was uh, there in uh, other part of the world probably will come to pakistan very fast so this is a leapfrog <laughs> to us probably <laughs> yeah, that, 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 uh, this is really surprising because, uh, you know, people who were not um, comfortable at all with the digital tools, now they are literally banking on the digital tools and uh, and enjoying it as well. I think that's the best part of it. So, um, so do you see, do you see that uh, post-corona, during the post-corona days, we will have massive uh, process re-engineering and, uh, you know, this, uh, this whole... Uh, uh, engagement principles of uh, customer and the businesses will also change. I think the four or five areas in a banking sector, definitely the lot change will come. First is definitely the uh, digital onboarding. Now you can see the most of the people coming to the branch are supposed to open the account. Even the Faisal Bank is currently working on and we are coming up with the three types of account, which will be 100% digital. So uh, people can be op be able to open an account which is called Asan account. And for uh, SMEs, we are coming with, with the e-merchant uh, digital account. And the, for freelancers, we are coming uh, e-freelance digital account. So these are the purely digital based. The, usually the people have to come and fill the long form and give a lot of documents and uh, then uh, account open. So we already doing it. We are in the middle of it and probably in a month's time it will be launched. The second thing is, as you said, that you first time paid the credit card through online and you will see a lot uh, after this uh, learning, the customer will feel more because it's always the first, first, uh, first time doing. When yeah. you do first time, you will start seeing that it is not that difficult and yeah. you start using the digital channels. So you will see in a moving forward basis, the people will use more uh, uh, banking app. They will use more on a internet banking. They will use more on a buying things from the market like uh, 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 malls, which is digital mall. So that behavior will definitely change. And uh, it's all customer experience that how customer feels easy to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that changes to the uh, uh, people who are offering the services. So my view is definitely coming up, uh, a lot of change will come in fact, and a uh, lot of product and services will come digitally great, in the great. banking sector at least. Great. So um, um, as our viewers have been uh, listening to us and uh, I introduced uh, you that uh, you know, you've, you've been in Malaysia for like 30 years and plus. So today when I uh, sent out the invitations, uh, one of my friends who is in uh, Malaysia so she got to know about it and she got excited that somebody from Malaysia is joining you today. I said, no, 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 he's sitting in Pakistan. So uh, let me introduce my friend from Malaysia. Um, so let me first uh, bring her in. So here is she. Uh, welcome, uh, Professor Sue, on board uh, from Malaysia. And I think these are beautiful times that people sitting in different locations you know, can talk to each other. So um, uh, I invited Professor Su, who has actually uh, been very active in the area of entrepreneurship. Uh, and as we understand, entrepreneurship is very hands-on. And you know, you want to sit together, you want to work together, but now we have social distancing in place. 
So um, I invited her to talk about this, that how, uh, especially in Malaysia, we have our own learnings here, and of course, we will share our learnings with her as well. But how in Malaysia, uh, this whole phenomenon of uh, work from home or remote uh, work is being implemented. So over to uh, you, uh, Professor. Hi, uh, very good evening, Dr. Arif. Dr. Farah, thank you for the invitation. Well, as we have been like uh, seeing the sectors, right? The private sectors, the government sectors have been doing a lot to so that this pandemic is getting in order. In Malaysia, the MCO has been like um, a process for us to really have uh, making sure the transitions in so many aspects. Yeah, in particular, at our university, we have to make uh, the people try to understand how actually could we um, now shift into a new ways of working, right? In, in this technology advance, like we have been preparing, uh, I'm currently serve uh, uh, as a professor of entrepreneurship in University of Malaysia, Kelantan, right? So we have been like connecting to a virtual learning environment. So we have Moodle in our uh, universities, but somehow rather not all courses is actually attached to the online system, but we have to make sure that it currently follows the MCO order that everything has got to be online. Yeah, so uh, the situation is getting like now everything has been pushed. The semesters has been uh, put forth uh, currently longer than it, its usual. Like yesterday, government has announced the third, you know, order that will be extended until uh, almost end of April. So we have to make sure the university has made a very uh, clear direction in terms of um, making sure the directives of the government is being followed. So in, in this manner, we also have to make sure the students' engagement with online teaching and learning is taking place. Yeah, and I think everybody is like using so many things like Google Hangouts. Yeah, Zoom has been like uh, last week has a problem and numbers of students have uh, lodged a complaint about the account being hacked. Um, maybe Dr. Arif can explain if anything, you know, goes about the use of Zoom. Now everybody is like so concerned now, but currently we have been like uh, so much get into the uh, learning online and using Google Handouts in most of the cases. Yeah. Uh, so, so whether we are in academia or whether we are in the banking sector, um, so these were like very uh, people-centric industries. So you would like to go to the you know, representatives in the banks and you would like to come to the teachers for problem resolution. So I was saying about this change in the consumer behavior. So whether you are a student, a learner, or you are a customer for the bank, so um, if we can, you know, wrap up our discussion that for any kind of businesses, if uh, if they have to focus on three critical things, uh, that how uh, they can improve the onboarding of their customers, because now two professions are sitting here. One is from the education sector. One is from the uh, banking sector. So what could be the three most critical elements that an organization should be thinking about, should be, you know, planning about? Uh, for a smooth onboarding of the customer. So over to uh, Arif. Arif, over to you. Yeah. Carry on, Dr. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, how are you, how are you uh, Professor? I'm fine. So you are you. in Kelantan? Yeah. No, currently okay, I'm back okay. in my hometown in, in, in Suramban. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, yeah. obviously, we have to learn a lot from Malaysia on uh, uh, your uh, how education online is happening in Malaysia, because Malaysia education system also allows certain uh, percentage that we, a student can take as a uh, e-learning, and a lot has happened over there already. And a lot of universities, uh, because I'm on a board of uh, Inti, uh, advising board of the Inti University. And exactly. what we did is in a five campuses, we actually uh, connected to each other. And the one professor can give a lecture to all five. So a lot, yeah. I think, in Malaysia is there, which we have to learn to Pakistan. 
and uh, obviously with this whole uh, scenario new scenario coming in the e learning will come up uh, very fast now coming back to for your question is that uh, how this uh, 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 banking sector is uh, coming up with the new things Uh, one of the thing is that uh, somehow pakistan and malaysia is a big difference between the bank account so if you see uh, malaysia it is a 92% uh, or 95% people are having already the account with some bank whereas uh, pakistan is only 21% of the people are having a account and uh, uh, you heard about from the prime minister the 25% people are uh, below the poverty poop uh, uh, the people who are can't even the eat three times a day so uh, country like this uh, uh, pakistan we are having a 30% people uh, definitely they don't have the need for the bank and uh, so the bank or the we call it the financial inclusion is very important for the country the second thing is that digital financial inclusion is an, an next step after the uh, uh, financial inclusion so what i propose uh, is basically that every university every college we have to go and train these people on a financial understanding uh, people uh, i have seen people coming up with a startup and uh, uh, they have to learn how to do their financials so it, it is a role of the banks probably or the financial industry to uh, create the education program for uh, financials into the uh, uh, industry colleges universities and others so that they should aware about how they have to open a account we are running a program called freelance uh, program where pakistan is the fourth largest freelance country in the world and uh, 1 million people are doing the job for the whole world actually uh, these are the people uh, giving a lot of services through the Uh, uh to the world now 4 billion dollar every year the money is coming to pakistan so what uh, faisal bank is doing is we worked out with the freelancers uh, this uh, pioneer and uh, we signed an agreement with them and we are coming a complete digital experience to these freelancers and we are having uh, we recently signed in lahore with the superior colleges uh, that uh, using their uh, Uh, those ladies who uh, graduated uh, but not doing anything and doing uh, work as a housewife we have to train them in a way that they should be able to spend 3 to 4 hours a day from the house by using internet and serve as a freelancer to the world so mm-hmm. if you see in pakistan a lot of women are um, uh, aside which are not actually uh, playing a vital role in our economy and this is the way that uh, any bank which faisal bank took it uh, from a perspective of uh, csr and as well as that bringing the money with the right channel to the country so are interested on both side and we are doing it so lot of such initiative we have started on a digital side in pakistan and after working 18 years uh, with this uh, malaysia and uh, i was the ceo of a scope international uh and uh, uh, work for the standard charter uh, where 7000 people was there so how 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 i have to bring that experience to the country and how we have to uh, uh, so my role is more towards that uh, obviously i born in pakistan and spend a lot of time in malaysia how i can help uh, uh, people and the bank in, in fact as well that we have to create a better customer experience through digital and current scenario also forced us that a lot of business people have to now ha- open an account because there is a shyness somewhere that the smes don't open the account and they are worried about the tax and other things but looking into the current scenario where they are having a difficulty that not having the bank account and uh, with the this uh, lockdown how they they have to uh, pay to the uh, their employees how they have to pay to the vendors or suppliers i think now thinking is all about that we have to launch a program that this sme and we have to create a very thin way to open the account of these smes with the bank 
and uh, obviously state bank is very willing to uh, reduce the overall regulation but it is a play around that this, these people should also feel to open an account it, it is not that the bank has to go and not uh, doing enough but uh, my view is that the people have to come up now and uh, play the role uh, in a financial uh, uh, overall uh, uh, econ economy yeah. so yeah, that's, 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 that's what i feel Right. Uh, my, my question from uh, Professor Sue is that, uh, of course, like as um, Arif said, that Malaysia was actually far ahead uh, in Pakistan, and uh, we had we have a lots of learning um, uh, definitely. But but even uh, even the economy, which is uh, quite uh, documented, even the economy uh, which is uh, which is digitized as well. But I am sure there must be a few other uh, initiatives that the government must have taken. In these uh, tough times, so uh, Professor, so can you share um, a couple of initiatives that your government uh, has taken to facilitate people uh, with uh, with this whole uh, digitalization process? Yeah, over to you. Okay, we have actually uh, done a lot in terms of um, ICT. So, in the Malaysian Blueprint Agenda up to twenty twenty five, I think quite recently. Uh, we have set up a five-year ICT transformation journey. So this is actually one of the angles of interest to build Malaysia as a part of the digital economy. And along with that, we cannot put behind education. So uh, in doing so, uh, the building block is actually trying to make sure that it is uh, fulfilling the aspirations of the nation and where actually we want uh, our you know uh, future graduates to be so we have to make sure that the uh, state for the ict transformation plan is making very effective in terms of deliverable one is on the business capabilities and two on the business uh, architecture so in this manner we have coming up with several design principles right the technology capabilities and architecture and we also have to make sure that the operating model it people process and government governance are all in order so this has ma uh, made us very clear in terms of building our roadmap and from there uh, from the preschool primary secondary and higher learning uh, the education minister have put forth on the end-to-end -end education life cycle platform so in this manner i think all is interacted we have the portal uh, we also have the mobile apps uh, we have agency partners with us and government enterprise solutions that help along with so many angle of interest in terms of building the capability architecture so education delivery management here is actually uh, try to put forth everything in terms of the information and knowledge management uh, research and development and also the strategic planning policy risk and also scholarship and financial aid management yeah mm -hmm. so back to back office operation is actually all about things that connect to the people management the rest of other things on finance you know general administration business analytics and reporting and I like the idea that Datu mentioned about, uh, you know, the process of uh, educating, right, the nation about the importance of banking. So even so, when we teach entrepreneurship, right, one of the aspects of economy of interest is actually on the finance side. Yeah. So it's not that easy because currently, like in Kelantan, we have to educate numbers of uh, bottom 40 you know uh, young people who participate in the economy through entrepreneurship we have to educate them a lot about opening up a bank account and i think whatever that you did that talk for the pakistan is actually also in the need in some of the states in malaysia so not a lot about we talk about technology now that covid 19 has been like engaging us into more towards digitizing everything i think it is more practicable that you know, this training nature of capacity building needs to be placed uh, so that everybody is understood on how to go about. Yeah. So, Farah, I, I think that helps to answer you. Yeah. About the. We have a couple of questions uh, flashing here. Let me uh, show it to us as well. So, here is a question. 
there is a gap between finance providers and SME in terms of digitalization, approval process terms, and transparency. So um, as um, uh, Professor Su works with SMEs and entrepreneurs, um, uh, Arif is, of course, belong, belongs to the banking sector. So I need a quick comment from both of you on, on this uh, gap that this, uh, uh, this viewer has uh, posted to us. Uh, over to Arif. Jay. GRF. Yeah, I, I think uh, she can tell you better about Malaysia where a lot is happening between SME and uh, financial provider because since last uh, three years, the all focus of the country is uh, towards the SME. And even the two years of Mahathir, a lot of uh, uh, inf uh, infrastructure setup has been done through the Alibaba and other ways. And recently, also, they have uh, announced a billions of dollars to give it to the SME uh, to promote them. So this Malaysia is a one of the case where they are really uh, and she can uh, give more on it. But in case of Pakistan, I think uh, SME is still uh, not using the uh, banks very well in effect because uh, there is a need. Uh, their need is to get the money from the banks and bank has their own credit way that how they have to evaluate their credit uh, scoring and give the loan to the SME. So uh, our job is basically how we can bring the two together. One is how SME has to uh, come up and obviously the government supports a lot to the SME. I've seen in Malaysia the government really supported a lot to the SME. Whereas, obviously, we have a very limited resource at a government level in Pakistan, so they cannot give a lot of money to the SMEs, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, financial institution can only help on the way, the way they are working, basically. So, yes, there is a gap. I think with a digital point of view, uh, probably we can be help them uh, to create an e-digital uh, e-merchants who are basically uh, selling on a digital way, how we can interact with the banking sector. Yeah, but, uh, uh, but Arif, um, um, I think uh, another issue that he, he's uh, talking about, uh, let me post, uh, uh, the same chap has another uh, uh, posting as well. And he talks about, uh, let me show this. So he talked about it, you know, so, so I can, so, because I'm also like a small business. I have also education technology <clears throat> company. And uh, I, when I go to the banks, I face a lot of issues. I cannot get money uh, from the banking sector. So I think the question is that a big enterprise, um, uh, you know, well-structured enterprise can go to the bank and bank can facilitate them. But what about those poor chaps like me who are not that well-structured? So, so I'll go to um, uh, Professor Su and then I'll come back to Arif uh, to tell us that have we done something in particular to facilitate, uh, you know, Pakistani uh, market for that. Uh, so uh, over to uh, Professor Su. Yeah. Uh, what is actually Malaysia is doing differently in terms of uh, facilitating and SMEs and small businesses uh, as compared to the big businesses? So I'm, is Malaysia doing differently uh, something uh, related to SMEs and the small businesses? Yeah, over to you, Professor Su. Yes, we have last uh, few days, the government has announced uh, uh, assistance yeah, to help boost the economy. So in this manner, I think government funding has been yeah, allocated. Professor, so we have lost your voice. Oh. <laughs> Can yeah. you hear me now? No, we're back, you're back, yeah. Okay. The government has made announcement to assist the SMEs uh, in terms of numbers of initiatives. So mm -hmm. they can start now rolling uh, the business, but uh, some essential services are only uh, made available, uh, not all businesses. But in terms mm -hmm. of SME, I think the, the, the funding uh, is being made available uh, mm -hmm. just to make sure that the economy is running. So I think this is back the uh, governance and policy of the government. Yeah. So if they have made such allocation, I think that would be a great help for the SME. So in order to bridge the gap, it's actually um, back to the factors of the policy of the country. So in this manner, I think uh, the SME uh, appear to listen it quite happily when uh, they make the announcement that it at least help them to make sure that the business is sustainable and despite the fact that you know quite a number of business have to close down 
only the essential and services and you know some of the other important uh, requirement uh, set by the governments are um, you know allowed to operate so these have a lot but in terms of opportunity for startup i think this is quite a risk time but we have done numbers of survey to make sure and uh, take a look the most uh, sick uh, product and services during the covid-19 uh, pandemic so in this case uh, there could be uh, an opportunity for new startup to start thinking about uh, new business but somehow rather it could be just for a short run yeah because uh, we did not expect it to be long because you see SME also suffer and what more it will like we are opening up opportunities for startup but we never give up there could be a lot of uh, important uh, angle of interest to be uh, or we can see for example like uh great food right so all of a sudden some of these uh old house owners right uh they tend to order food and that help to boost another economy for young people uh to start doing the delivery uh, services and this mm -hmm. could be another um you know uh important uh, things that could create opportunity for the new coming in business True, true. Uh, now over to um, I. Uh, so, how will banks facilitate, you know, uh, SMEs? So we can't have the same yardstick. We can't have the same products. Over to uh, you, Aris. Yeah. So it's a difficult question in a way. How we have to move forward? And this uh, Imran Malik has said something that is there is any opportunity that is startups has to play the role in between. and i fully agree with him that there is a lot of opportunity in pakistan for the startups uh, to play a role in this whole thing and i have seen in um, number of startups in fact pakistan and i am impressed by the way that uh, uh, like finja and uh, 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 this uh, 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 the few number of companies which i really saw uh that they are doing a very great job between uh, the financial institutions and uh, the uh, the startups and the fintech companies and uh, that can bridge and support to the um, smes uh, in term of the services that that is no problem in a sense and i can clearly see that there is a lot of uh, uh, things supposed to be done the one of the thing which has not been happened in pakistan which is called crowdfunding so yeah, if you yeah. see in malaysia is around 9 uh, 9 or 10 companies already <laughs> awarded from a, a, a security commission as a crowd funding uh, for the peer to peer lending and that that is something that we should try in pakistan because uh, this will fly people would like to invest a small investment into any project uh, which is uh, sme and they can give it to the sme as well so uh, that will help uh, second is i have seen uh, something like tez who is giving a nano uh, landing which is a very small landing obviously as mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah sorry i didn't so uh, yeah go ahead yeah so i think uh, in, in a sme space the difficulty is more on a financing level Yeah. uh financing level i think bank uh, has their own way of doing things and uh, very hard to break it although trying our best uh to come up with the new scoring system uh, which is uh, differently taken and uh, we call it pre scoring system so okay. we are learning and i think banks very soon will come up with a way that they can be able to assess the people beyond uh, yeah yeah i'm sorry um yeah right um now this is my last question which i have taken from the audience and now this girl is asking us a very tough question so now you have made the things free for us we are doing free transactions but she is saying that all across the world it was free only we were being charged in pakistan Hello. so will this be happening so, later uh, yeah <laughs> only in pakistan yeah yeah we were yes, we were being known for the digital just imagine i'm sorry guys but 
just imagine you put people to come on board and you are charging them to come on board. So, so Arif, what is your take on it? Will so, it be, uh, or will we go back to the old system? Yeah, over to you. I think take up is that uh, learning from a COVID-19 from a SME as well, because a lot of stress and pressure uh, nowadays, because obviously survival is not that easy now for the FNB uh, business and uh, uh, small businesses. Uh, so they have to start thinking about differently. And uh, I feel in a moving forward basis, uh, Obviously, the government, this triangle has to work fine. Means the government, means state bank and the government and the banking system, which is financial institution and the SME has to work this triangle and uh, support to the SME business. Because in Pakistan, let me tell you, the large organization has already become large. The same is in Malaysia. Like if you call it a, a large organization, this is already large in a few countries and that cannot be further larger. So the whole hope in a many countries is all around the SME. And my yeah, view is yeah. that Pakistan will grow when the SME will move ahead. Yeah, true, true. So uh, thank you guys. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if I wrap up our discussion, I think one of the biggest takeaway of this discussion is that uh, this pandemic uh, has disrupted a few things. A, um, even the banking sector of Pakistan stopped charging us to transfer money from one account to another. And and so it means that you can re-engineer your processes, right? That's the first learning that we have learned. The second thing is that uh, customer onboarding has become uh, quite easy, actually. So which means that perhaps we were not uh, putting our effort in the right direction, but this pandemic has created a huge opportunity for businesses uh, who, which were digital, and now this is also a huge opportunity for the governments uh, to make people digital. And now they can also, you know, come online. And 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 the biggest thing, and I, you both will agree with me, uh, because Malaysia is a documented economy. Because of this digitalization and this pandemic, a lot of documentation will also take place. And I'm sure you will agree with me. And I think uh, from Malaysia, what we are learning that even they were doing a lot of digitalization even they were very sme supportive but still government has brought in some new interventions so yeah. intervention the process of intervention will never stop uh it's a continuous learning for all of us and of course we all need to do a lot of innovation so thank you guys thank you for your time you. and i hope uh, that uh, we have added uh, some good input uh, from our side to our viewers i believe that this video will be available on the website um, yes. uh, and as well as on the uh, Facebook Thank page you very part. much having me here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. There's, yeah. a ticker, uh, you know, at, um, there's a ticker going on on this uh, video as well. Uh, so we are offering uh, this design thinking course free of cost only for those people who have uh, logged into our website during this conversation. So uh, Professor Sue was talking about design. Uh, we will have another session on design how design can help us uh, we will invite you guys over someday yes. uh, so have a safe day and have a very good day. take yeah. care of yourself yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you very much